Today's project is transforming a dress and a hat with a pillowcase. You heard it right, a pillowcase. I was at the Goodwill store and I picked up this really cool pillowcase just by itself, didn't even have a match to it. And it had this beautiful embroidery and the color was very similar to the dress that I knew I needed to work on. The dress, I need to shorten it by eight inches, but I don't want to cut off the length because I want to be able to lengthen the dress for somebody taller that would like to rent out the costume. Now the hat that came with the dress, um, I just really stupid. It was very floppy and, and it just, it's not a very good looking hat. And it just looked kind of frumpy, you know, like something you might find on an old, old lady. So I wanted to take the hat apart and restyle it. I ne also need to make a belt, because um, if you have a very long dress and it's a very full skirt, you have an elastic waist. That elastic waist is not going to hang straight. So the dress needed to have a waistband. So the pillowcase is my solution. Let me show you what I did with this outfit. My task for today is to hem this dress. I need to take off 10 inches. Now it's a costume and I don't want to cut off 10 inches. So I'm going to shorten it in a way that I don't have to cut off any fabric. And I will show you how that's done. To hem a long full skirt, it is best to have the dress hung up high. It could be hung on a hanger from a door as I have done, or on a mannequin, if you have one, or on a person, the person to whom will be wearing the dress. With my tape measure hanging around my neck, I measured up four inches from the bottom hem of the dress, folding the fabric over and pinning, working my way all around the circumference of the dress hem. I, I measured and pinned every, every bit of the way. I start on the side of the dress and work across the front to the other side. Then I reach up and I turn the dress around on the hanger to the opposite side so I can work around the back. When I stitch, I make sure the edge of my fabric runs along the 8th 8th mark on my sewing machine, which is a full inch. This is the furthest mark out on the needle plate of the sewing machine. While sewing, I concentrate on keeping the pinned edge of the fabric running along that mark so that I have a nice, even one inch seam. I always like to press my work as I go. It keeps things neat. Press the hem down towards the lower hem all the way around the base of the skirt. Because the fabric is folded over, this takes up two inches of length, even though it looks like just a one inch fold. So with this method of hemming, we take, we're taking up two inches of fabric at a time. I like to work with whole even numbers. Since I need to remove eight inches of length, I will repeat this process around the base of the dress four times. I actually needed to take nine inches, but that extra inch is an odd number, so my plan is to add fullness to the slip by lifting the skirt to hopefully take up that extra inch needed off the hem. And I do press each hem, each fold, after I've, you know, sewed each one. It's a little bit time consuming, but it's well worth it. And, then, and the cool thing is, these little folds actually causes the dress to flare out more at the bottom because it gives a little bit more stiffness to the base of the hem of the dress. So it really works great and you, that way you don't have to cut off any length. Okay, well I have the dress hemmed and this is a costume that was created by a company called Von Lancelot and it comes with this really stupid looking hat I mean, is that not a dumb looking hat? I mean, it just, it might be cute if it actually stayed out, but it's like really dumb. So I am going to restyle this hat to try to make it look like something cute because 
I don't think anybody would want to wear this retarded hat. It's very poorly designed. So I took apart the hat and look at this. A square hole. No wonder it's a stupid hat. And these puckers, that's really dumb too. This is the uh, rim and we've got a lining and the outside. And like that's a really large hole. And it's not even a perfect circle, it's sort of squarish, rectangularish. And it's too big for a rim of a hat. I mean, it would be nice. I mean, the hole is so big that if I even put a top on it, it would just fall down. Goodness. It's as big as a collar. Maybe I should put a collar on the dress. I mean, the lace trim matches the trim on the bottom of the dress. That would only leave me with these little pieces, which isn't much to work with. Hmm. But I do have two of them. Maybe if I combine them, I could get a little more oomph out of it, but still not really enough to make a hat. I did pick up this pillowcase that has this lovely embroidery on it. Maybe, and the color could almost work. It looks pretty close. I don't know if you could see that. Maybe I could make a bonnet using this as the back and that for the... I don't know. I'll have to experiment. But I think what I want to do is try on the dress and see what this color looks like on the dress before I decide. Now, I might be able to make a bonnet with this part of it. I still think it needs a little stiffener. Um, because I might be able to make a bonnet out of it with these two parts. Okay, so I have the dress on and I want to see what this collar, this hat rim, looks, how it looks as a collar. I, I think I like it. It adds a little extra um, style to the dress. Now I'd have to finish off the edges because these are all raw edges. And have to iron out, press out all those wrinkles. Now one way I could finish it would be to, I could put like white fabric that gathers in the middle with an elastic. Nobody could just pull over the head. Yeah, I think I like that. So I took the stitching out and I see that it is not even a circle. It's an oval and not even a perfect one at that. It seems narrower at this end and wider at that end. But it still could be the back of a bonnet. Um, I would probably just maybe use this wide end for the top of the bonnet and it would be gathered more on that end and maybe wind up cutting off a little bit at the bottom or having a flap at the bottom because there'll be ribbons. I wonder if this is long enough. Might be able to. If it's the same size as that, I could cut two, I could maybe make ribbons out of this to put tie backs in the back of the bonnet. That might work. I might make, I think I'm gonna make a prayer bonnet with this. like that would be enough. Yeah. And I could, and this is, I cut off from the pillowcase. And it could be added on here. I could even add some white lace right there. I could put white lace there. And that is, it's okay if it's a little bit bigger. By the time I trim it and finish it off, it'll be a little smaller. But that could work. And I think.
think the back, let's compare. I'm kind of using this as a pattern. Okay, it folds over right there. It folds over kind of that way. <clears throat> so there's enough fabric here that I could make a bonnet. Just kind of get a rough idea. This would be gathered and maybe have a bonnet. And then I guess I would have to use the pillowcase again for making the straps, a little tie back there and the straps. I think that'll work. I think I'd, this is going to be too long. I'll have to shorten it some. So I think I'll work on reshaping this because this, this piece isn't even really even. But yeah, that would make a prairie bonnet using the pillowcase because I, I really like this embroidery. But I do think it needs some white lace. I think it would be nice to have some lace here, maybe even there, and some around this side. So I cut off a piece so that it's even. And as I look at that, that's good. That'll be taken up in seam allowance. That'll work. Of course, we'll do some seam allowance here. So this is all that's left over. So I'm using all the parts. One section of the previous hat, I folded in half lengthwise and cut it into two even parts. I also trimmed it so that it was even on both sides to make it symmetrical. To make the rim of the bonnet firmer, I decided to add a layer of cotton batting. I joined the pillowcase strips to the inside edge of each bonnet rim. I pressed the inside lining of the bonnet edge over a half inch. When adding lace to what will be the outside edge of the bonnet's rim, point the outside edge of the lace towards the center because it will be turned. I used only a half inch lace, so I placed it where the seam will go. So rim and facing right sides together, clip the curves. Finish off the lower edge of the back of the bonnet. To make the straps for the bonnet, I cut four two inch wide strips crosswise from the pillowcase, fold them in half, sewed one end and along the open side. Always clip corners before turning strips. That helps to have sharp points or corners once turned. I use a bodkin to turn the strips. It has two ends with teeth to hold the fabric, elastic, ribbon, whatever you need to pull through a casing. In this case, I'm going to turn the uh, strips. You slide the ring to close or open the teeth. I insert the bodkin in the closed position. Let it fall all the way to the bottom. Then, the, then open the bodkin, feeling with my fingers. Open the teeth. Then push some fabric between its teeth and slide the ring again to close the teeth that will be gripping the fabric. Once you know it has a good grip, you can then slide the remaining of the strip down the bodkin until the tip comes out of the opening. Gently pull the fabric back on the outside, being careful not to open the teeth of the bodkin. See how it's still attached when you have turned the strip inside out? I use the blunt end of my scissors to push the corners out to a point. Now we can attach the back ties to each side of the back of the bonnet before we attach the back to the front of the bonnet. With right sides together, I pin the back of the bonnet to the outside rim. I first match up the center points, then the two ends. The remaining fabric is divided between those points. The back will have folds in the fabric. You want most of the folds at the top of the bonnet for a fuller look. With the back pinned to the rim, we're ready to sew them together. After you remove all the pins, bring the lining of the bonnet to cover the area that we just sewed. The edge is already pressed over. Pin that edge down, covering up the previous row of stitches. I like to turn the bonnet over and stitch from the top where I can see the stitching because I care more about how the stitches appear on the outside of the bonnet rather than underneath. Now I could hand stitch it in place, 
but the pins are just faster. Then I quilted the rim of the bonnet with several rows of stitching, which gave the bonnet a firm rim that holds its shape. To add elastic to the back of the bonnet, I used a piece of half inch white bias tape, which is perfect to make a casing for a quarter inch elastic. Fold the ends under, pin, and then sew close to the edges of the bias tape both, down both sides. Cut the elastic slightly shorter than the full width of the back. Use the bodkin again to pull the elastic through the casing. Secure each end of the elastic with some stitching. Finally, fold the raw edges of the chin strap under and then secure to each side of the flap of the bonnet and then the bonnet will be complete. And that is how you make an old-time prairie bonnet. Now it's time to make the belt for the dress. I wanted to use the rest of the pillowcase for that purpose. When I cut the two side seams off the pillowcase, I was delighted to find that it was one long piece of fabric. That made it even more perfect to create a belt. I want a wide belt in the front center and narrower ties on each side. So I cut the pillowcase up accordingly. Again, to make a firmer belt, I decided to add some cotton batting to the wide portion of the belt. Then I quilted it in a similar to how I quilted the broom of the bonnet. Just a couple more close-up shots so you can see the cuteness of this bonnet and the lovely embroidery, the quilting. This is the piece of the pillowcase inside. A bow on the end. What you can do with a pillowcase. How it just mixing it with the lace um, and also carrying that same color into the the belt to the dress. The belt is really long so it'll fit a variety of people and it will still make a big bow in the back. So that's what you can do with a pillowcase. How to transform a, a, a hat and a dress with a pillowcase. For the collar I cut four pieces like this. Two for the lining and two for the main garment. I joined them together at the shoulder seams, first pinning them right sides together, then sewing both the lining and the outside garment the same way. I finger pressed the seams open since it's such a short seam, matching up the seams on both the lining and the front of the garment. We pin the seams open. Pin both parts right sides together at the neck opening. Sew a seam all the way around for a finished edge, but leave a small opening to insert the elastic. Clip the curves. That makes for a smoother edge for a nice smooth round turning. Turn and press for a finished edge. Next, we sew a seam all the way around a half inch away from the previous row of stitching. This time the seam goes all the way around with no opening necessary. The elastic goes inside of here. Next I pin the one side of the neck insert to the right side of the main collar. Start by matching up the side seams which will be at the shoulders. It will have folds in it because we want it to have a gathered look. That's okay. Sew that part together remove the pins and then turn to the other side and pin that part of the white part turning the edges under as you go around. Hand stitch this seam with a needle and thread. With a nice edge I added some half inch flat lace turning it slightly as I sewed going around the neck because you're working around a circle. I used a quarter inch elastic. I made sure it was large enough for my head to fit through without overstretching the elastic or being too tight. I used the bodkin again to pull the elastic through the casing. 
Pin the end so you don't lose it. Once the elastic is all the way around, put both ends out a little further so that you have enough room to sew them end over end together. Then slip that section back inside the casing and close up the opening with blind stitching. I added a small ribbon to mark the center front. And this is all the fabric that I have left over from the pillowcase and the original hat. Well, I am quite proud of the result. And the girl that wore the dress, she looks so cute. Very full skirt. And, oh, I even modified her uh, slip. I had a hoop skirt that was given to me. And sort of went like that and fullness was on the bottom but there was no fullness up top so I added to the slip as well so that her dress would be a little bit more full now I'm probably gonna work on that hoop skirt some more because I really would like to have a skirt that just you know goes out from the very top so I'm probably gonna modify that a little further but um, I want to show you a picture of how cute she looked and her new bonnet and the dress that was um, restyled for her. I was able to use the leftover parts of the hat to add a little style to the dress by adding a collar and I think it looked really cute. And the dress is flexible for somebody who is taller or skinnier. I hope you enjoyed that project. Please subscribe to see some more cool transformations.